This is a wipeout. Well, Quibi is shutting down six months after launching its short-form streaming service. This is a wipeout in business. Today, we'll be going over one of the biggest wipeouts in business called Quibi. This company only launched this year, and uh, like the rest of the things in 2020, it went horribly wrong. The way I would describe Quibi is like Netflix, but make it TikTok version. Quibi offers shows that are about five to 10 minutes long with famous actors. I actually downloaded this app out of curiosity a few months ago, and some big people in business are behind it. Jeffrey Katzenberg is behind Quibi. He actually used to be a chairman at Walt Disney Studios, so you would have kind of thought that Quibi would have been in good hands with a Disney executive in charge. It just makes sense. So like, what the fuck went wrong? The first reason why I think Quibi failed is the fact that the person they're trying to target and the content they're trying to make does not align. No, sir. I could not remember like half of the actors of the movies I watched because they tended to be older actors, people in their 30s. Like I'm not even sure how old Liam Hemsworth is, but he's not 19. And Quibi was trying to target a TikTok audience, a Gen Z young demographic. And they spent so much money, specifically a billion dollars to make movies and shows with these actors that were, you know, primarily older to target a young audience that doesn't watch them. Other than Anna Kendrick and Liam Hemsworth, I don't know any of the fucking names. Like I don't know who the fuck this bitch is or this bitch. And that might sound ignorant, but a lot of Gen Z feels this way. And it's the reason why, even if you see a billboard with a big celebrity, if the audience you're trying to target doesn't know who the fuck that is, kind of screwed. I think I understood though what Quibi was trying to get at. They thought if it could get big, big celebrities, they could get any user to come in. I think the thing they failed to realize is Gen Z doesn't look at celebrities anymore as like people that are influencers. Like the people that drive actual influence are influencers or people that are maybe Gen Z's age. I feel like Quibi was really trying to use power over relatability and that's why it seared away a lot of users. I think the second reason why Quibi failed is also, in addition to all of this, they were asking for money. Imagine an app launches that no one asked for with actors that nobody cares for. Sorry, Liam Hensworth. On top of all of this, you gotta pay $5 a month. I'm pretty sure Quibi did roll out a free trial strategy like halfway through, but it's still a lot of work for a new user who doesn't know anything about an app to download a new app. That causes friction. Even asking a consumer to input their credit card can drop signups by 50%. I used to work a lot in e-commerce and app development, and the best way to get people onto a new product is by limiting the amount of walls you add. So if you add a wall of put your credit card. If you add a wall of like pay $5 a month, it's gonna limit the amount of people that actually turn out. Like the reason why Netflix can charge $10 a month is because it's Netflix. They have so many shows. They have culture built around it. Like people literally use the terminology Netflix and chill when they want to get it on. Point is, there's zero incentification to download an app, let alone pay for something that no one really asked for. But like I said, I was a rare, rare, rare species that decided to download Quibi and pay for it because I was just so curious and I actually love their content. It was great. I just think that not too many people decided to do that because of the you know initial problem with the lack of audience fit. All right, the third reason why I think Quibi fucked up, and this is a huge one. I think this is probably bigger than the first and second, is the lack of sharing capabilities. Most of you people watching this video right now probably have never heard of Quibi. Like comment below if you actually have never seen these words. Because outside a billboard you might have saw of them or like Twitter, no one knows who Quibi is. No one texted Quibi a link to a friend. Like no one TikToked about it. Like no one shared the app. And the app lacks so much sharing features. Like if you look at the top social media platforms, Instagram, right? If you have an Instagram story, you can share to a friend and DM them that picture, right? If you have TikTok, you can text people a link to your TikTok. Quibi was literally just streaming, which is fine for most big companies. But when it comes to introducing a new app, you need to rely on peers, your friends to share it for you because that's how you grow a platform. If you guys don't know, I used to be a founder of an app company called Personal Brand Journey. So I understand that this terminology is called the network effect. A lot of people building apps, companies, startups really rely on the network effect to, to grow their initial users. Facebook and Instagram is a really great example. If you have a mom, dad, a cousin on Facebook, but you're not on it, you feel left out. And FOMO is a main emotion that plays on the network effect, which essentially is once you have four or five people that have something, you want to be a part of it. And this network effect is contagious. It spreads like wildfire, right? The minute your friend group is all on something, but you're not, you're going to feel like you missed out. And if you're confused, like we don't even have to put a tech terminology. Like remember the time you were maybe in high school or middle school, I hope middle school, and all your friends were on like My Little Pony shit and you were the only person that wasn't on that show. That was embarrassing. And you have to jump on that show. Please don't make fun of me if you didn't watch My Little Pony in middle school because I know some of you guys did, okay? Okay. 
I was one of them, and I'm not even ashamed. Point is, Quibi should have relied on that emotion. They had literally zero sharing capabilities. Like, you couldn't even text someone this movie. You couldn't message or comment anything. Like, you couldn't even like a post or whatever. And I think that hindered the growth of Quibi tremendously. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the last reason why Quibi tremendously failed. And this reason, I think, is a personal opinion. I'm not sure if anybody agrees. So let me know if you guys agree with this. But I really think, to sum up reason number four of why Quibi failed, I would say it's because if I'm on my phone, I'd rather use TikTok. Please tell me if I'm wrong, but like TikTok is really fucking addicting. There's not enough hours in the day to be on TikTok because I will be on there for 30 minutes just scrolling or getting my news feed. And then it's like 5 p.m. and like five hours go by and I'm literally on TikTok all day. And this is why I'm late to all my meetings because I was on TikTok. Anyways, the point is, I think TikTok was such a crucial part in culture during the pandemic and quarantining and being indoors. Like people were so satisfied with TikTok. And when consumers are satisfied with the product and you introduce something else, there's no demand for it, right? In business, there's something called supply and demand. There's already a lot of supply in the short form content world. TikTok gives so many users amazing short form content. Quibi here is trying to put in a highly produced TikTok basically, and there's not enough demand. And they were like scratching their heads, like what the fuck, why did this happen? And personally for me, I felt that way. Like I felt like TikTok satisfied my needs of entertainment and I really didn't want to spend that much money on a new app that I don't really know with actors I never heard of. So in addition to that, there's literally no sharing capabilities. So no one's going to even know I had Quibi, right? And I think TikTok was the platform of 2020 just because you could do all those things I mentioned. You could get funny content that people loved with influencers that are relatable. TikTok was free. TikTok is shareable. You know, I'm not trying to like boost up TikTok, but it really did help me throughout the pandemic to pass time and feel a little bit better about myself. And I think Quibi just came in a market that didn't necessarily need them. So where does this leave us right now? Well, I think that, wait. Why do I smell like shit? Okay, <laughs> that's not where I want to leave you guys off. I'm sorry, what the fuck? I need a shower. I think this leaves us with this mindset of, you know, you see on the news so many companies that do really well. This company raised a billion dollars. This company is on the stock market. Everyone invests in Tesla because right now stocks are going up and nobody talks about the failures of any company. For every Netflix, there's always a Schmetflix that tried the same thing but did not achieve the same results. And you could be, for example, someone who wants to start a company and do everything right, but timing wasn't there. Or maybe your offer wasn't the right thing for the market at the time. And I think it's just so important to almost learn from Quibi's failures and understand that this shit is normal. Most companies go bankrupt and it sounds really depressing, but it's a part of learning. I'm sure Quibi learned a lot from this experience. Is it worth a billion dollars? I'm not sure, but <laughs> any experience is valuable because you take these lessons and you turn it into the next thing. And I can definitely testify this for myself. I made a whole video on this channel you're watching called My Business Failed in 21 Months. And it's not clickbait. It's genuinely true. Like I had a company that went pew, bankrupt in 21 months and I felt so guilty. Like I was like, I'm such a piece of shit. I let my own business go down in flames and I felt really bad. And it took a lot of time for me to understand that this is normal. Quibi happens to a lot of people. Companies like I started happen. Small businesses during the pandemic closed down. Like business isn't always going to be a smooth ride. With that being said, although that sounds depressing, it's actually a great thing because when you do enough trial and error, over time, your ideas get better and better. App that I kept mentioning that went bankrupt was called personal brand journey. I learned so much about building software. I wasn't able to sustain it financially. So I took all those lessons I've learned about the app and I brought it to my new business where I consult brands to avoid the same mistakes I did. So I consult software companies, apps also to create marketing strategies that really work. And I teach them all the things that worked for me and didn't work. And that experience taught me also not only that, but persistence, being able to just keep going even though everything's on fire because everything will be okay. And whether you're starting a business watching this video or you're someone just interested in this quibby shit, I hope you know that even if you fail miserably at something, nothing is truly fatal. You're gonna be okay. And I'm actually curious to see how the founders at Quibi do it when they come back or if they come back. But I'm gonna let you guys know that this is not the end for Quibi. I'm literally like, quote me on this and I'm not trying to predict anything, but if I were to make a prediction, in about five years, a similar Quibi app is gonna pop up and be extremely successful and literally be one of the number one apps. And we can look at that and be like, why didn't Quibi win? Why did Schmibby win? A lot of it has to do with trial and error and how business works and timing. I like Quibi. I actually downloaded it. Like I said, I just think they came in at a wrong time, at a wrong market, and who knows the future of them. I hope you guys like this video about business and how apps fail. If you guys like this video, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. You want to be the next comment winner? Comment below. I love you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one.